Yes. Um, so, Sean James Osler, do you come with agendas, ideas, and things you want to learn tonight, or are you on for the ride? I'm here for the ride. <laughs> huh? I'm here for the ride. No, okay. we actually have a problem with um, one of the things we've been trying to work on. Yeah. So, you guys have, okay. And I Sean? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of here for the ride, too. I'm, I've fallen quite a bit behind, but I think I can catch up. Okay, so um, so if you want, we can figure out kind of where you are and stuff, right? Well, I, I know where I am. I'm back a ways, but I know what I need to do. So I'm just kind of don't want to get any more behind, so I'm kind of staying where with the course. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so what I'd suggest... Okay, so we should, we, should, we should talk about that. Are you ever on campus or no? Not anymore, right? I, I mean, I can be. I work 10 minutes away from campus in Utica. Oh, really? Yeah, I work at Utica Bread. You do? I've never seen you there. In Utica Bread? Yeah. I work in the morning. Okay. Till when? Uh, two o'clock, usually. Till two, okay. Do you stop in often? Um, twice in my whole life. Oh, well, stop in tomorrow. <laughs> All right. We have great uh, bread. I know. So maybe if you want to come up like a two on a Wednesday. Two on a Wednesday, uh, my work week begins Wednesdays at another restaurant I work at. Okay. So anyway, so we can just do it online and that'll be fine. So we'll figure that out. So, All right. So All right. Austin, let's go with the stuff that you're working on. Well, Oops. I'm echoing in somebody's place. Right? Okay. So that's, there we go. No? Can you hear me now? Yeah. And you're right. I'll get a headset. Hold on a second. But you can start. So share your screen and tell me what you're doing. I'm going to stop my video too. To make some bandwidth. Are we good? Yep. I'll just keep muting so it doesn't echo. Okay. So. Me and James worked on the appear macro and we couldn't get it to work. So that's the biggest issue that I had. Hello? <laughs> Is he there? <laughs> yeah, he's on you. I think you want to get ahead. Tell me, tell me what you want to have appear. Well, anything. It's just not working in my Wiki. Um, I have a, we tried, I don't know what codes James was sending me, but there were some codes that he wanted me to try and we tried importing the macro and it didn't work. So I'm not exactly sure what to do first, I guess. Mm -hmm. One. One. So where's the place that you tried it? Right here. So show me the code. You can, you know, make it full screen, hide your menu, and open a preview. James, do you have the code? I'm not sure exactly. You have the code. Yeah, we um imported the one of your um tiddlers so with the macro in it. Yeah, but let's look at let's start from where it's not working. So show me what you're expecting to see happen. No, I'm sorry. No, in Oscar. So in your in your to list, yeah. so close your menu. Like this one? Yeah. And now go to a place where you expect where you use the appear macro or where you want it to happen. And let's look at that. Okay. So where's the place you tried it and it doesn't work? Here, but then I ended up deleting it. Okay. So is there any other place you tried it that doesn't work? Uh, no, it just, I guess the whole, I tried the whole that you had on yours and none of it worked. Um, I even tried like doing it with other people, but 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so show me show me the um, the code you're trying to make work. Yeah, let me see if I can find. So like any kind of code that you had. Mm -hmm. not okay. Exactly. So when you put the appear on it, I gotta get a. So when you click here on red cloud, James, can you mute your your? Okay. Um, your so when you click the appear in that second the do you have a heads up by any chance? Me? Yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> Is it me that's echoing? What's that? Me that's echoing. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can find one. Okay, one moment. Okay. Well, you can just mute your microphone and then just push the top. Okay. You got to mute your mic. Okay. So now when press on red flower and the appear part of red. So when you press on the name of the tiddler, it takes you to the tiddler and press on the appear part of red flower. You know, the little marks right after red flower. And what's happening there is that specific fields of a tiddler are being displayed. Okay, so if you um, open the code for testing two appears in a tiddler, I think it says, so let's see, it's running the appear Steve red flower. So we have to find the appear Steve macro, right? Okay, so close that tiddler. And there's probably up on the top, there's an appear tag directly under the test. Yeah, so is appear Steve tag there? Probably appear macros modified. Yep, so let's look in that. So I've been trying to tag the macro. So now let's edit this macro. And there's the code for Peer Steve. So what a Peer Steve does is it calls the Peer macro. Okay, that's the um, the first line says just to find Steve Appear, right? And then the rest is like, what's it do? So the first thing it does is it makes builds a link to the tiddler inside those square brackets. So that's why you see the words red flower. So if you want that link, you can keep that. If you don't want that link, you take it out. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then what it does is says, well, I don't know what that state thing is. Someone told me to put it in there and it works. So that for me is a black box. Um, I, I do know actually what it does is it, it has to do with um, what the current code thinks, the current state of the tiddler is. The, and the current state of the whole document kind of talks about, you know, your, your wiki is a live document that you're constantly rereading and changing things in. So if you get interested in that stuff, you pay attention to state, but if you're not, you just ignore it, but make sure it's there when you see it. And then what it does is it says, well, get the text field from my tiddler and display it, and then a break, and get the thumbnail from my tiddler and display it, and get the caption from my tiddler and display it. Okay, so do you know what I mean by the text, the thumbnail, and the caption? I'll show that to you, okay? So save this, or just close this, X out of this, and then, Go to the red flower tiddler. So click on the link exactly, and let's edit red flower. So red flower has those, the title of red flower is red flower. The text of red flower is the stuff inside the box. The value of red flower caption is down there in that field. Yep, and the value of Flickr URL is something you paste in. And the value of thumbnail is something you could paste in from Flickr. And if you added a field name, like you can just type in Osra right there in field name. Um, down below in field name, yeah, right there you can type in Osra and then put some value like howdy. And then add it. 
and save this. Okay, and then go back to the modified macros code, the second tiddler there. Yeah, and edit. And change where it says text to Osra. And save it. And now go to the red flower up here. There's Howdy. Do you see how that worked? Okay, so what that's what's cool about that is that you can like manage these tiddlers and the way they appear. So you can so I like that. I like the way that that shows up, like it just shows a couple of little fields of the macro. And that would be cool in your autobiography. And then you could decide what fields you want to show. You see, now you can unmute your audio. I didn't mean to like say shut up for all that time. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, so you want to get that to work in your week, right? Yes. Okay. So you can mute your audio again. Mute your mic again. Shut up, Asra. There you go. <laughs> so go to uh, Design Right. And um, so click, see the appear, um, click on the appear, the appear tag. It's everywhere, yep. And then you can grab, scroll down and light and touch the appear modified, but don't navigate to it. So linger over appear modified, the, the, uh, up the top one. Yeah, that one. So linger, no, the second one, core Mac, there you go. Now I think you can click and drag that to um, your wiki. I think it's draggable from there. Yep, and drag it up to your wiki, up to the tab. Up to the tab and let it open and now drag, there you go, and let go. And now you can import it. And did it import? It did. Okay, so the other thing we need is go back to mine. And these are hard to figure out. You need the, um, go to a peer, just the big appear, the regular, yeah. And there's probably like some installation instruction. Just click on that, because that's a link. So that's like, that's a link. And look at these visit source and follow install instructions. So click on source. And let's follow the install instructions. Everybody does it differently. Is there an install tab? No. Oh, there is. <laughs> drag that. No, wait. Oh, drag to your wiki and reload. So click and drag to your wiki. Yep. And import. And um, reload. Did you save yet? Do you, I don't know how you save. You're working in your Dropbox, so I don't know how you save your wiki. Okay. Does that work? I guess so. I'll tell you what I'm liking way better than Dropbox is Tiddly Spot these days. Tiddly, I like Tiddly Spot is really easy, and I've been um, starting to use it, but it's got its issues. So, did this work or no? I don't know. Did it work? Because I do have, I did it in this one. Yeah, you did. Well, that's good. Um, so, one of my teaching techniques is to have you do it once and have it fail, and then have you do it again by yourself. Sorry. <laughs> do you want me to do it right now? Yeah. You want me to walk you through it? Oh, that's okay. I think I can do it. Okay.
get involved on that. And did you reload? So, oh, you know, go over to mine and grab red flower. Not the not red flower up here, red flower and red flower. Yeah, I think you need red flower and red flower up here. You need the demos to make sure they work. Okay, here's the test. Where's red flower up here though? There it is. Well, that's definitely gonna work. Yay. Oh, and it even has your howdy in it. So it's calling Azra. Um, so, um, so like, how do you think you'd use that? Like effectively in your autobiography, you wanna find a place to use it? I'm not hearing you because we muted you. I'm not exactly sure yet. I haven't really thought about how I want to set it up. How about the, um, the um, you, got a, you have a place where you link to, um, it's called history, I think. Yeah, what if we made, what if you made that appear? Because that's like, so you so copy the name of that um, Tiddler. And then where do you have a link to it? Right up in the previous one. I was born in, yeah. So let's edit that Tiddler. Might close your menu so we can watch it appear, appear. And um, instead of where, right where you've got the link, I don't know. We got to fix this thing, James. We got to figure out why the her, you know, her uh, not getting the full screen. Anyway, if you change that um, that link to Bosnian, yeah, you can copy the the code. It's just a, right. I think it's a Pierce Steve Tiddler name. You can rename Steve to appear Azra. Um, yeah, just take it right at after where you say where you've got Bosnian right before those square brackets. Yep, right there. And then instead of red flower, right. Oh, you don't have to retype it. Just, yeah. You, can, you got it right there. Just get rid of the square brackets. Backspace, backspace. Yeah, and then at the end, replace the square brackets with, yeah, and put the tiddler name in quotes. because it's got spaces inside of it. And um, get rid of your extra set of quotes before the appear, I think. Yeah, it's just an extraneous set of quotes. Yep, just get rid of that. Okay, so save that. And, um, and so I was born in dot, 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 and there's no appear button. So let's, so, um, so let's edit that again. And, um, Oh, right. So we have to change the name of the macro. So save that and go to the um, appear code modified. Um, there should be an. 
Yeah, that's good. No, and so click on appear there, and the, there should be a link to the code, to the core modified. Yeah. Yep. Edit that, and edit that macro, and change the name of the macro from appear Steve to appear Azra. This is your code now. By the way, below that is a peer link. You can play with that too. But not today. <laughs> yeah. And now let's look at your. So, did it work? Okay, well, a little bit, but you know. So, it's giving you the tiddler name, right? It's just not appearing. So let's look at the Tiddler Bosnian Herzegovina Europe. And let's edit the contents. And um, it's got contents. Um, hmm. Well, let's put in some, um, let's give it an Osra field and write Howdy and see if we can make Howdy show up. And so this is sort of like the debugging phase, you know, eventually this will work and sometimes it works right away. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you're getting howdy. So nothing else. So let's look at your macro and let's ask it. Let's see what you're asking for. Because we might have modified it when we were playing around. So let's see what you're asking for. So edit the core macros appear modified and you're asking for the Osra field, the thumbnail, and the caption. Oh, we've got, yeah, we changed text to Osra. So change where it says Osra to text. And um, that's good. Now it'll work. And if you, wanna, if you want that in a box or modified, then you start playing with the CSS stuff for that. But you've got these structures now, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's called transclusion. And you might think of this appear Osra, uh, the appear Osra macro as a technique of transclusion. And so when would this be a good way? What kinds of stuff would be usefully transcluded here? Different kinds of stuff, factual stuff, okay. And maybe in your autobiography, you want to begin to develop styles, like you transclude that way for certain kinds of materials and another way for others. Um, did you see the um, Did you see the little Easter egg in one of the? Um, I called it an Easter egg in one of the other students. They had a fun little thing where they clicked on the text and the words changed to something else, like in that poem. Remember? I don't know if you read that poem. That, that was one of the readings. Um, I can't remember what it's called exactly, but it's uh, by Hansen. Um, if you go to Design Right by Hansen, um, I think her name is Hansen. Um, I don't know why I think it's a Hansen Writing. Yeah, it was called Writing. Um, and click on that online link. Um, so, the, uh, so transclusion sometimes is going to be for like maps, but you can also click on Writing here. Um, and you can also transclude text differently. So you, this, would, this would be an interesting, you can keep clicking. Um, this would be an interesting way for an autobiography to emerge. And um, you could do something like this, not really this elaborate perhaps, but you could walk us through a story, different things come and go. Does that sound like something that would be kind of fun? So, um, but do, do you get how, that appear macro makes this possible. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, so I'm glad you came. Did you have other stuff to, that you wanted to play with? You can unmute your mic, I'll stop talking. Um, I think that was it for me. <laughs> All right, good. Um, so <laughs> Sean's getting close mic time. <clears throat> Sorry, I, there was a uh, reverb. I didn't hear what you said. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. Are you, oh, did you have anything? Did you, um, 
you want to chat about the stuff that you've got and, and kind of like what you want to build on or you're not? You Actually, um, the period was eluding me, but now that you went through it with her, I think I have it pretty well. Okay. So I, I can have, I can use that for uh, imagery and some other things I want to use. Yeah. And did you see how the fields worked? Yep. Um, so like if you're doing all those pictures from Disney or something, I don't yep. know, little concept, right? Yes. How many do you have? Um, I have five folder type things with about 15 in each. So 75 pictures? Roughly, yep. Okay. Well, I thought you might have, I thought you might say like 800 or something. Oh, I, I took about 1,000, but oh. <clears throat> I thought if I brought it down to 15 in each, it would make it a little more manageable. Okay, so you've already curated. Yes. That's uh, in, in progress as we speak. Okay. The, the um, Flickr method, it works well, but it's very uh, tedious. Well, you have to – what's tedious? Well, it, it, it's all tedious, I suppose, yeah. It's just... No, no, no. I mean, but what is – is it because, because each Flickr object has a unique ID and you have to generate the embed codes individually? It's that level of tedious. You right, mean. and when you take all the pictures with a phone, it just gives it a, a total of image hyphen whatever number it is. And so then when I put it in a Flickr, I've got to name everything. <clears throat> and there's only so many castle names you can come up with and different things like that. Well, the names didn't need to be unique. Right, right. I mean, castle, I, I click on it and uh, they all appear. But I'm just, for my own personal uh, sanity, I like to label things differently. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, so in some ways, the, um, if you're curating... As opposed to you, the opportunity was there and still could be to use tiddlywinky tagging as a curatorial technique. Right. So pictures come in in a burst of, what'd you say, a thousand? Well, yeah, they could be. Yeah. And you've already sifted through them like as a human being and made choices. Right. I narrowed it down to the ones I thought would be most appropriate or interesting. <clears throat> but what I was getting at in some respects is that if you have a large, I mean, so you've got a smaller collection now and yes. um, the challenge is, so what, what do you, what's the, what's the story that you want to tell with those? Kind of um, almost like a uh, travel brochure. You can see what each ride and attraction is and how they relate to each other. Not hypertextually, but when you look at a map, you look at one world and everything that's in that area and then another world and what's in that area. And then using hypertext is the same visualization. Like um, Adventureland will have a central word, Adventureland, and all the things that are attached to it are contained within that area. Have you ever been to Disney World? It's kind of tough to... Yeah, no. Okay. It's, it's, I, I, I've, I've been to Disney hypertextualized once before in Tiddly Weeky. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's not quite the same, but it's, it's, it's I, a lot cheaper, I bet. Yeah, I should dig that. Oh, my video is still off. I should dig that project up. Um, somebody else did this a while ago. It's a. It, it seems like it should fit. Yeah, um, that'd be interesting to look at. Yeah. So there's like. So you've got. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm still interested. So those thousand pictures. Where are they? They're on my on my computer. They're on your computer. Oh, yeah, okay. I have everything. I copied everything as the week went on. Yeah. As much um, as I could. So they're sequential, right? Yeah, more or less. I mean, no, I mean, they have a seek. They're not. They have a timestamp, so they have a sequence. Yep. And numerical, of course. Yeah. And I bet you that there's that as you navigate through Disney, uh -huh. from neighborhood to neighborhood, is that what they're called? Neighborhoods or theme? Or what were they again? Uh, lands, like Tomorrowland, yeah. Adventureland. Yeah. So you've got like you you have a picture that starts in a land, and then the next then somewhere down your stream, your picture, you're at another land, right? Yes. Yep. One area is adventure land, the next one is frontier land or whatever. And then so if you took your photos, <coughs> say there's a thousand of them as a single stream, you could very quickly find the first and the last ones for a land, and then the first and the last ones for land in your stream. Right. Usually just by looking at them. Just like scanning them, like it would yep. take you 
30 minutes to scan a thousand of them at most. Right, because I know exactly what's contained in each land. So I can just yeah. look for certain things. So you can apply your human intelligence quickly, tag a thousand pictures by land faster than you could have selected those 75. I, yeah, that's, that, that's feasible. Yeah, so you might, so if you, I mean, that might be interesting to do. And then within those streams, are there sub streams that you could also tag yourself, like by kind of quickly visualizing them? Yes, uh, um, let's just say Adventureland. I mean, that's the mainstream. Right. And each one, there's a certain attraction. Uh, let's say Pirates of the Caribbean. That could be a sub stream because there's pictures within that attraction. Okay, yeah. So then if you, so then if you, so then you see what we're getting at is you begin to, ex so you all, if you think of all thousand pictures laid out like a film, right? Everybody's tagged Disney, right? There's a substream for land. And then within land, there's a substream for rides. Sure. And then within that, there's a substream for the 75 that I like the best. Right. <laughs> so okay. Picked out. Yeah, that's actually how I'm arranging it by by land and then sub yeah. like an outline. Just keep going sub heading. Right, but but throw them into a um, a thousand is like a lot. Yeah, but it, there it's easy if you throw them into a spreadsheet. Right, and then so you've got them all on a file. Are you a Mac or Windows person? I can't remember. Um, Windows. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I don't know how to do this on a Mac either, but. <laughs> <laughs> there's a I only there's a technique somewhere. I don't know how to do it in Linux, believe it or not, where you can get a I bet you James knows how to do this. Where you can get a um a list of all the files in a directory right. as a as a text file that you can import into a spreadsheet. Oh. I can tell you how to do it in DOS. Yeah, I can do it in DOS, I can do it in Linux. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like one of those things like that's I'm going way like, back. Yeah, I don't know how to do it in Windows, but there's a way, you know, I'm sure it's like Google and someone will tell you exactly how to do it. Yeah, I can list a file into a spreadsheet, sure. That's easy enough. Well, you want to list a file into a text file. Right. And then you import the text file into a spreadsheet. Right, okay. Um, Google, yeah, and then you've got all of them, then they're objects, and then we can, you know, eventually each photo, of course, becomes a tiddler with tags. Right. And then we've got the stuff that Karen's working on and the stuff that, um, so this will fit right in. There's this other stuff that's been really subtly talked about in design, right? Um, that I'm working on it. And your thing might work out perfectly for it. Um, there's a exhibit in, that we have to submit for by May to this conference in Canada about hypertext art. Mm -hmm. And thinking of building these little, this multi-sequential narrative set of tools and they all, kind of break down to 64 tiddlers or 64 photos. Okay. And 64 is a magic number because it's a four by four by four. So right. Four, 16 by four is 64. <clears throat> Those three tags, each with four attributes, the perfect, and I don't know what it is, but the shape will be 64 objects where every tag will, every, there will be one tag with every possible combination of one object with every possible combination of tags. Okay. Okay. I, I think I finally got it right the last time. Um, so what that means, though, is that you can show somebody a photograph and they right. can navigate based on three tags and they can go to the first, next, previous, or last and they'll go to one of only one and one other photograph. But they can get – so that's kind of a way to show them a set of 64 photographs in three different orders – but they can't go anywhere else out of those 64. Okay. Does that make it? See, I can't quite explain it yet, but we're getting close. I didn't, if I saw it, I'd, it'd be easy to figure out, I'm sure. Yeah, if I saw it, I'd be happy. <laughs> you can only see it in my mind. I haven't seen it in code quite yet. It's getting close. It's very similar to what Haygard's built. If you've looked at any of his stuff, he's got most of the code running. Yeah, he's... Uh... Pretty cool it hurts guy. my eyes to look at his stuff. It's so confusing. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the one of the most interesting things about this class is really this idea of like what Oz was, was just doing, of sort of seeing text and architecting or designing text or building with these building blocks that writers use, but you don't think of it as writing, but you're sort of like just on the cusp of 
of like being halfway between a writer and a graphic designer. Right. And so you can take your photographs and build a little, basically it's an application that you probably said, oh, I didn't know hypertext was application, but an app is really not much more than hypertext expressed. Okay. If you think, I mean, at some level, there's code, there's way more code behind it, but you can build these, like this, this little 64 object thing. You know, if you want to play with these, we could build that out of your photographs and see if it works. So, um, but it starts with having a bigger set of tiddlers behind it. So having a thousand photographs so that you can, um, you know, just so that you can experience sort of managing that kind of data. Um, but then we would have your 64 on top of it and people could branch out from one of those special photographs to see all the rest of them about that particular land or that attraction. <clears throat> right. So you're building sort of like a front end to a larger collection. Yeah, I can almost visualize it. Um, if you look at Disney World from above, there's a central hub. Yep. And the lands radiate out from that. Yeah. You can do the same thing with image. Just do one central image and then radiate everything from the center. Um, is that what you that what you're getting at or no? Maybe I don't know. That's a different. I get a different visual when you're talking about it that way. Um, it, it's a wheel from above. It's just a central hub and then spokes out the different. Right. Areas. I do that. Um, but I'm thinking of navigating within your collection of photographs, not navigating not using the Disney World navigation to sort of, right, you're only looking at one, you're gonna look at one photograph at a time. Right, and you wanna look at all 64 at a time? Or how many there are? I have, I've been thinking about that too. Um, so if you do all 64 at a time, um, like so imagine them on a poster. Huh? So what <clears throat> point would they be in? Well, you'd have, right, so you've got, you definitely have three sets of 16. Four sets of 16, right? Right. Because you've got eight columns and eight rows. Right. Eight by eight. Yeah, you've got to distribute your 64 photographs in a logical way and then represent them in a similar way where you can navigate in a fairly prescribed way. If you're thinking of all the, like, so if you can visualize how you can navigate from each photograph, that, that's a cool thing, you know, because that, that gives you a, a connection between a physical object. So you can imagine printing your 64 photographs from right. a, in a very special order, but in a way that then somebody can digitally navigate the same poster, but not just like in one order, but in any order, like they can go, you know, I don't know what's going to hold your, you have to have these tags that hold these objects together across lands. Yes. So attraction type, you know, emotions, you know, something that holds them together, you know, you need right, right. Land, but you need something else. Not just the name of the land. Well, that's one thing you're going to have what, you know, if you're doing the 64, you're going to have how many lands are there? Uh, five I've focused on. Five, so you're going to... But I can so modify good. that, so it's easily put into 64. Well, it's going to be four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything's got to be in four, so you got to okay. land. Um, but then what, so are there, what are the different kinds of attractions? Uh, there's thrill rides, there's more visual attractions, there's rides called dark rides, which you on a conveyor type thing. So there's, there's a lot of different classifications. Okay, so we need one more kind of ride. Um, let's see, dark ride, attraction, thrill ride. You have four kinds of rides. Right. So we got four lands, four rides, and you have to make sure that that there's rides in each of the different lands. There are. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then we need one more. So f four rides, four lands. And they could be the last one could be your pure subjective rating. Oh, Favorite. okay. You know what I mean? Like, don't like so much, whatever, whatever. Right. And then, and it might take a while before you find the 64 photographs that actually fill out this special matrix. So if you had lots of things tagged, and I think you would find that tagging a stream is not very difficult. Okay. You know, once you sort of, it's like it just starts in 05 and it goes to 107, boom, they're all this ride. <laughs> right. You know, it's really, it's not gonna be that because, you're, the, because your photographs were taken in a timestamp sequence, um, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Except when I had to go back and retake photos or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's a you know, If I forgot something, it was, you know. 
Yeah. But then it will be interesting to generate some like, like how many different sets of 64 are there in your tags, you know, especially right. those your favorites and stuff. So. Yeah, I, I could rate them one through four and that would give us four more um, tags. Yeah. That's one being my least favorite, four being my favorite. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So, um, so obviously you don't want to keep all of them, but you want to keep more than like the 80, like, you know, a couple of hundred would be nice. Yeah, well, they're all still there. My wife forbids me from deleting any photos. Oh, okay, good. Well, I no, mean, uh, yeah, but obviously you've got like, you know, you don't need seven of exactly the same thing. Right, right. So, all right, so I hope that, the, and so that would work pretty well as a um, semester project um, that we could sort of work towards that. And then, you know, if you want to make sure you're up with all the techniques through those exercises, that's fine. It might take me a while to go through and critique. As long as you're keeping up, then that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'll have to do is just make sure I go back and cover everything. I've yeah. Um, but do the midterm first. The, uh, the project or the review thing? The mid, even the review things. And even if you say, well, I haven't done this yet, but here's where I'm going to do it. I haven't done this yet, but this is what I have to do. I haven't okay. done you know, so you set it up so it's ready to go. And that way you can talk about your project and what you're going to do with that. Sure. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. All right. I appreciate it. Sure. Good. Glad you came tonight. That's good. Me too. <laughs> so James, anything going on? No, um, I submitted the midterm today. Okay. I finally got internet. Yeah. You know, I realized what I did in the midterm. I changed something, so I was displaying, like, a second sheet in the in the, the wiki. And it's kind of weird what I'm doing here is I'm using, I'm using Google because everybody can write to a Google form without yep. permission. And I take that text, and I sort of live publish the sheet, but then I – got too fancy and I live published a second sheet with links, but I forgot to copy my code down. Wow. So everybody else was submitting, but you had to click on the other sheet to see their stuff. So um, I did a critique of yours. Sorry, what was that? I did a critique of a couple of them. So, um, so keep watching for it. And to see your critique, you go back to the place where you submitted it and right next to it, it should say crit. So Osra, there's one there for you. Did you see it? I did. Now I do have a question. Good. Can we, for the next um, half of the semester, we can just work on, if, let's say I chose to do the project, we can just work on that for the rest of the Yeah, if you wanted to work on the, an autobiography, for example, and we would talk about how big it is, like what, you know, so you decide if you want to focus more on developing content and links to content, or you want to develop structure and structure on you know how much you want to write yourself how much you want to repurpose if i think it would be pretty cool what you to do when you started is to write a sort of a parallel narrative of your life and then like sort of a wikipedia or somebody else's writing about it you know what i mean so you can because you had some really interesting experiences you can talk about different things you've done and then sort of parallel in parallel narratives somebody else's reporting of those sort of more objective events you know what i mean what do you mean by somebody else? Well, like Wikipedia describes the war. Wikipedia describes refugees and you, you know what I mean? Wikipedia, not Wikipedia, but others describe situations that you've been in and you have a different angle on them. You know, um, more than just links, but from like curated content. Um, and especially if you, and if you transclude those things, that's kind of fun. And, and if, and I think you'd want to develop a, um, a sense of tags that cuts between my what do you have my past my present my future so we need we need to see some connectors across those so those are three strands but you want to have a set of tags that connects across those three strands because otherwise you know that's like that's the connective tissue that we want that you want to see emerge um, have one more question with the pictures what's the best way for me to so I think the easiest way, how many pictures are you talking about? Like fewer than 50? I could come up with a lot, but that's why I don't know like where to break it down, where to use pictures. Well, if it depends on sort of the, the weight. But if say that you wanted to put like 50 to 100 pictures. So like a sizable amount, but not, not 
so much that you wanted to make it your whole project. Okay, so 50 is sort of a measurable number that you could do by hand. So what Sean was saying was tedious. Um, you'd do that 50 times, but doing it a thousand times is very tedious. 50 times is bad enough, um, or 25. But you, we could also figure. Um, <clears throat> are you a Dropbox user? I can't remember. You are, right? Are you a Dropbox Pro user or a volunteer? Do you pay them $10 a month? I didn't hear you. No, well, I don't know. If it's, I don't pay the $10 a month, but I do have a premium. Oh, you have premium. Okay. So if you've got premium, then there's a way to create a public folder and you can drop all your images in there. And what's really nice about that is that you can name the images yourself and then you can build embed codes for them. Um, so, all you, and then you can just put all the, then they're really easy to, um, we'll, we have to build a macro to serve a Dropbox image. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's probably one in some of my, I haven't, there's probably, if you poke around my code, you'll see Dropbox image code. Um, <clears throat> or if you poke around, you'll find Dropbox image. Just others have built it, but I think I've got it. And let me see if I've got it. Um, would that be useful for me as well? If I did it that way? Are you, yeah. Um, I mean, I can go yeah. Dropbox premium. I don't care about that. Yeah, it might be because it gets a lot, it's much easier to manage. Um, doesn't have um, it doesn't have great there's some good things about it it works well for a one for a one-off project um, I have to think about it there's a why was I thinking for you um, yeah because yours are on your, yeah you're gonna have to put them on a website somewhere um, Osra, you can also put them on SUNY IT's website basically it's just using Dropbox as a website so if you know how to if you have your own um, website somewhere and you know how to serve images, then all you have to do is put them on a website somewhere. Oh, okay. You know, so you can put it, uh, Osra, you build websites, don't you, or something? No, not really. No, no, not really. So you don't have it, you don't like have a web server somewhere of your own? Okay. Um, Dropbox images. Um, I use this other one that was, Cloudinary. You might look at Cloudinary. Um, so, how did I do it with Cloudinary? It's this. So I got to name it, which is good if you pre-name your photographs and you kind of want your name to have some meaning instead of an image number. Um, but this was generated randomly, I think. So you couldn't, you can't depend on it. I can't remember. You might play with this Cloudinary. Um, I've been struggling with this for a while. Um, you could ask, you look around and see how other people do it. I mean, there's lots of people who use Tiddly Week in the world and they all have images that they serve all sorts of different ways. Um, you can drag it directly into your wiki. It just makes your wiki really big and I think unwieldy. So, um, James, how are you doing it? Um, I'm using a combination of Dropbox and my web server. So your web server for like a big chunk of them and Dropbox for one-offs? Yeah, just really quick, simple ones. Yeah, so like if I'm going to make a screen grab, I'll just save it in Dropbox. Correct. You know, you know, and then, um, yeah, that's a part, that's a pretty, so it depends, Audrey, if you want to go into production with your photographs, you kind of want to just do it manually, you know what I mean? So the, the 50 is kind of the number, like, you know, under 50, 25 is probably not worth developing a system, you know, you get much over 25, 50, certainly if you get over 50, you need some sort of system and directory structure because you're in a production environment at that point. Um, so I'd encourage you to go to a production environment. Um, and I would, and that would, that could be, so what I'm suggesting is like, if you'd say, okay, I'm going to do photographs as a, you know, 20% of my autobiography. So I have to learn how to produce them and tag them and relate to them hypertextually. Then there's less text that you might want to write. You know, you have to balance the amount of effort you put in. So if you've got, 
you know, I think an autobiography is really cool. Um, if you, I mean, there's a bunch of people doing visual stuff. There's a lot of visual work that you could do with tags. And so it's hypertext. It's still, but it can be all this navigational tagging, transcluding text and images moving can all be done with just photographs. It doesn't have to be words. Because to me, that's the background structure that's interesting. So, so if you want to think about how to do it that way, that's, that's you know, you can balance it 50-50, whatever you want to do. Gives you something to think about, though, right? Do you have, like, thousands of photographs? Pardon? I've come up with a lot, but I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, think, so, so think about it a little bit and write back. Um, you do a response to your critique, which is in a week or so, the 21st. So you basically take the week I wrote and you write in it and send it back, you know, with the permalink. Okay. <coughs> All right, then. Well, hey, thank you, Azra. Thank you, Sean, for showing up. James, thank you, you. you've got clear thing with the video and then James we have to talk the idea is that I think you should start a whole design right video wiki and start publishing them. So, so, so more work for me all right yeah. yeah so then yeah just start publishing the whole collection and that'll be that okay catch you all later thank you are we okay. continuing this at eight o'clock with the other group or no no I didn't announce that I'll stick around in case anybody shows up. But I'll come back at eight, but I don't but don't worry about recording it. Okay. All right, and you're welcome to hang out if you'd like, but I don't think anyone will come because I didn't announce it. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'll catch you later. Okay, bye. Yep.